day and night, in steady rhythm, there operates within the human body a marvelous machine, the heart. From the sprightly action of babyhood down through the years to the sedate pace of old age, the heart beats about two and one half billion times. The heart is purely a muscular pump which maintains the circulation of our life's blood. The force that starts each beat lies within the heart itself as we see in this turtle's heart. It continues to beat long after its removal from the body. The automatic rhythmic action can be noted in even a small part of heart muscle. And even after such an isolated part of the heart has ceased to beat, mechanical stimulation can produce contractions artificially. In man, the heart is a double pump. In each cycle of its action, the oracles above act as receiving chambers. The right oracle, for venous blood returning from the body, poor in oxygen and containing much waste carbon dioxide. The left oracle receives purified blood through the pulmonary veins from the lungs. These chambers empty their contents into the relaxed ventricles below. The ventricles on contracting shortly after each beat of the oracles act as true pumps. Blood is forced from the right ventricle through the pulmonary artery to the lungs for purification while purified blood is forced out by the left ventricle through the aorta and other arteries to all parts of the body. Note the efficient system of heart valves. As the ventricles relax after contraction, the valves of the two arteries close, preventing backflow of blood. The auricular ventricular valves open, permitting the ventricles to fill with blood from the auricles. Now contraction of the ventricles starts and the mitral and tricuspid valves are forced shut. The contraction of the ventricles also now forces open the arterial valves, permitting free outward flow of the blood. Here we see the action of one of the heart valves. Note that fluid passes freely in one direction, but that the valves prevent its going in the other. There is one heart sound as the ventricles contract and a second when they relax and the exit valves snap shut. This beat of about 70 per minute is normal for the average adult at rest. During and for a time after exercise, however, the heart pumps much faster. We will demonstrate with this turtle's heart some of the factors responsible for changes in the rate of heartbeat. In exercise, the body temperature rises. We irrigate this heart with a warm salt solution. Note the increased rate of beating. Now it is again normal, but carbon dioxide and adrenaline, which increase in quantity in the blood during exercise, Likewise, stimulate the heart to beat faster. The heart is also equipped with a brake device, a pair of nerves which, when stimulated, slow down its action. These heart movements are responsible for the arterial pulse the swelling of an artery with blood when the heart contracts and a partial collapse when the heart relaxes. 
The blood is pumped to all parts of the body through the arteries in which the blood flows in spurts. The arteries branch finally into microscopic capillaries found in every body tissue. It is only through the thin capillary walls where the blood flows very slowly that oxygen can reach the blood from the lungs or food from the intestines or that waste products and other materials manufactured by the cells can migrate into the bloodstream to be carried to other cells or to organs of excretion. From the capillaries, the blood flows back to the heart through the veins. We see that this flow is a steady stream. The rate of flow is more rapid in the larger vessels, but much slower through the tiny capillaries. This difference in rate is purely mechanical. In this model, the total cross-sectional area of the small vessels exceeds that of the larger one. We note a slower flow in the smaller vessels. This corresponds to the situation as between capillaries and arteries. The blood vessels are not merely passive tubes, for by virtue of muscles that encircle their walls, small arteries are able to constrict or to dilate, to increase or decrease their internal caliber. In this way, they adjust the rate and amount of blood flow to meet the requirements of various organs or other parts of the body. When skeletal muscles are active, the blood vessels in the muscles are dilated. Thereby, the increased quantity of blood pumped by the heart is shunted away from such regions as the viscera, where tissues are less active, toward regions where activity is greatest, such as arms and legs. The muscles of the blood vessels are partially controlled by nerves. In this rabbit's ear, we cut the cervical nerve and note the resultant dilatation of blood vessels. But when the cervical nerve is stimulated, we note that the vessels are constricted. An important feature of the circulatory system is the arterial blood pressure. Unless this is kept sufficiently high, temporary or permanent damage results. If the pressure is too low to force blood to the head, fainting may occur because of inadequate oxygen supply to the brain. The arterial blood pressure is intimately dependent upon the rate of ejection of blood by the heart, as we see in this anesthetized dog. When the heart rate is slowed down, we note that the pressure falls. As the rate again increases, the pressure rises. The volume of blood in circulation is another factor in blood pressure. Here we approximate the loss of blood from a wound and note that the arterial blood pressure falls. Death may result from a continued inadequate supply of blood to vital centers. The transfusion of blood or even the injection of salt solution restores pressure to its normal level, frequently saving life after extensive bleeding. The third factor in blood pressure is the caliber of the blood vessels. When large numbers of these vessels are constricted, the pressure is elevated. Dilatation of a large number of blood vessels results in a lowering of the pressure. In this film, we have learned how the varying needs of the body, at rest or in work, are adequately and automatically met by adjustments of the heart and blood vessels. Most of this information has been gained from experimentation, which has been carried on by men of medical science in their unending fight against the causes of disease and death.